On May 7th, 2016, uh, Joshua Brown became the first casualty in an autonomous car accident. The cameras on his Tesla uh, did not see a white trailer truck. So he was driving at about 70 miles an hour on a sunny Florida day. A white trailer truck was coming in the opposite direction. And against the glint of the sunlight, the cameras could not see very clearly. And with that accident, uh, about two years back, uh, autonomous cars and their problems went from you know, science fiction to dinner table conversations. Now, not just autonomous cars, there are a whole range of applications which are moving towards autonomy. You have smart cities, you have automated inspection systems, you have smart homes, and you also have smart surveillance and smart borders and smart soldiers. And the underlying theme about autonomy is all about how do you provide better safety and how do you empower more convenience, right? And the focus of my talk today is what's the underlying technology which empowers autonomy? You know, what really makes it tick? And it's about cameras and imaging systems, and incidentally, that's what we at Tonbo Imaging make. Right? When you look at a camera today, camera was not built for autonomy. A camera was built for taking pretty pictures. It's evolved over the years, but it's primary purpose was to take good pictures. And if you look 200 years back from the first uh, you know, camera, the Giro Dagro type in 1800s, to your cell phone camera, the camera has evolved in form and fit, but it's not changed in its underlying concept. So it looks much like the Cyclops. This is a mythical creature which had one eye, and a camera's design is exactly like the Cyclops. Right? Now, but when you look at nature, as humans, we have two eyes. So two eyes give you a sense of depth and allows you to see the world in 3D. But what's more interesting is insects like dragonflies, they have 40,000 eyes. Now, what this crazy compound eye structure does is it allows you to create very efficient imaging systems in a very small form factor. So we took inspiration from the dragonfly and decided to build cameras and imaging systems which had multiple eyes or multiple apertures. Right? And as a tribute to this marvelous insect, we decided to call the company Tonbo, which incidentally means dragonfly in Japanese. Now, autonomy, and which is the basis of the talk, uh, requires something beyond sensing. Right? Sensing is one aspect of autonomy. You need to be able to see the environment, you need to be able to understand what's happening around you, and you need to be able to communicate very efficiently. So, what we did is we built a camera based on this technology and said, let's build a camera which can see really well. We gave it a brain so it could interpret the environment, so it could automatically understand what's happening around the environment. And it could communicate very efficiently with other cameras, so this information is transmitted between cameras to create an ad hoc network. And this became our platform to empower autonomy. Now, you have a ton of applications which can use autonomy. Right? And you know, as I mentioned, you have defense, you have uh, industrial automation, you have autonomous vehicles. Defense is very interesting because defense has pretty much the same analogy like a camera. Cameras didn't change for 200 years, and defense has not changed for 100 years. Right? So the underlying principle about how people built defense companies has been the same. Asset-heavy companies, a lot of capital invested, a lot of infrastructure invested. So we said, well, you know, can we be for the defense industry what Apple is for the consumer electronics industry? Own the intellectual property, own the brand, own the design, and outsource everything else, contract manufacture everything else, right? And that became the way we started building products. So here's a video to give you a sense in terms of the products we built and how they are deployed. What's common to us and ISKCON 
uh, and it's, it's an interesting analogy, is uh, when Swami Prabhupada wanted to start ISKCON, he went to his guru and told him, you know, I want to start ISKCON and, you know, impart this knowledge. So, Swami Prabhupada's advice, I mean, guru told him, why don't you go to the US, educate all of them, once they accept it, India will accept it, right? And our defense business was pretty much the same. So, we are deployed worldwide, we are deployed in about 25 countries, but there were six countries where this was deployed first before it came to India. So, all the way from Southeast Asia and Philippines to our latest Peru, where we won a $100 million program to modernize the Peruvian army. And India figured seventh on that list after we had deployed internationally. And, you know, it's kind of, so part of our objective was to build, you know, a defense industry, uh, not build a product or a feature. And we wanted to build a platform which allows other people to build systems over and above it. And we've been very fortunate to have very patient investors. And one of the reasons why we could do this was because we had excellent and very patient investors. Uh, from Mumbai Angels, my friends in 2010 who supported me, to Artiman Capital in 2012, and to Walden, Qualcomm, Edelweiss, and a bunch of Goldman Sachs partners. And that's the reason we've been able to deploy this capital efficiently and build defense systems for around the world. <laughs>